business with you, so call me a cat. Hi, I'm Joanne, and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. Today is day 21 of the wine advent calendar, where we try a wine a day every day leading up to Christmas. But no matter how you celebrate the holidays, please join me in trying 24 wines in 24 days. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thanks and welcome back. Let's get started. Day 21. Stuck. All right. Il Principe Cabernet Trevenezzi. Italian red. Yay! Il Principe Cabernet Trevenezzi. Not sure what that means, but it is from Italy. My guess is that Il Principe means the prince. The guy looks a little uptight on the cover. Let's get this open and see what it's all about. I'm really thrilled that it's another red wine because I love red wines. I mean, I love tasting all the different wines. My heart is with the red wines. Let's get this open. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, the color is a very like nice red holiday looking red, so it already looks inviting. I think it's really interesting how many shades of red are possible in wine, and most of them beautiful. And I still really don't entirely know what the color can tell you other than if it's very dense or it's see-through. That has to do with how full-bodied it is. I also heard that when you tilt it sideways, if it's like a little bit more brown near the edges, that sometimes can talk about the age of the wine. Of course, when you're buying inexpensive wine, I think all bets are off of how you like normally check wine, because there's a bunch of other things influencing it. So. At this point, I just look at it and go, well, that's a pretty color, and it's very Christmassy. So let's give it a smell, see what it smells like. Hmm, interesting. This one smells like wet cement, like a work site. They refer to it as wet stone. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and it's a strong smell, like right off the bat, smelled it. And then if I had to pick a couple other smells, let me think. Hmm, maybe like cranberries or something? But for sure that wet stone, wet rock, I guess a little acidic, like maybe I'm smelling the alcohol on it. All right, I don't smell many other flavors. Does it say anything else in there that I'm supposed to be smelling? It says black cherry, violet. I'm not real good with the flower smells. I would believe that that's a smell that's in here, but I just, I don't know what violets smell like. And then they say baking spices. That one I am okay with because I've smelled cinnamon in things before and I've smelled ginger nutmeg. This one, eh, maybe, maybe. Let's give it a taste and see. Tastes like wet stone and cherries. Oh, it's a tart one. So this is from Trevenezzi, which is northeastern Italy. So Trevenezzi is the region. Yeah. So it's a Cabernet Sauvignon from yes. that region. And so it is Italian, and we've mentioned before the DOC and the DOCG labels that sometimes are on Italian wines, and that's like sort of the government standard, and this one doesn't have that. Doesn't mean it's not capable of being a good wine, just means it's not regulated by the government. It has an okay finish. The taste of it is a little like, oh, that was tart, but sitting here, it's like, oh, that was good. Like I wanted another sip. Okay, but it is a little tart. I have been finding that when I counter this with tart, it takes the tart down. So I am going straight for this gorgonzola blue cheese. It looks so good. And I do know that blue cheeses tend to have a little bit of tartness. That's a really good piece of cheese. Mm. Okay, and that's the standard sort of blue cheese taste. It's a little milder than blue cheese is gorgonzola, which I don't know if gorgonzola is technically blue cheese. That's neither here nor there. So that filled my mouth with some like tart and savory notes. So let's see what this does. Sweeten it up. Wow, okay, that did it. That took away the tartness from this. Now let me see, now what does it taste like? Funny, now those baking spices are coming through. It's got like a, a pepperiness to it, a cinnamoniness to it. It doesn't smell like that. The fruit flavors are much more mild now. How long are you supposed to aerate Wine. I think it all depends on the wine. When I used to work in restaurants, people would aerate it for half an hour sometimes, or sometimes people will take things out and open them and leave them on the counter open. I'm not sure, because I know also you're trying to keep wines at a certain temperature, but I do know what the aeration does, even if you're just doing this, or if you're putting it through one of those pour spout thingies, it just adds oxygen to it, which then has a, a reaction to all the molecules that are in there because they're, they suddenly have oxygen with them. So suddenly you can smell them more and it does different things. If you smell your wine before 
you swirl it and then again after, or if you taste it before you swirl it and then you taste again after. I have done that sometimes with wines if I taste it and I'm like, oh, I'm not liking it right now. And you leave it alone for 10 minutes, that's helped as well. But this has been the fastest way for me to like correct something in a wine that I'm not in love with right off the bat. Like that tartness was a lot. Blue cheese with this was fantastic. I wonder what else might be good with it. Oh, they say grilled steak, beef stew, veal. Well, I don't have any of that on here, but I do have prosciutto. Let me try a prosciutto and see if that has the same effect. Let's see what that does. That's okay. It's funny, when you said about the violets, it gives it more of a floral flavor. I mean, I've only mildly eaten flowers, the ones that come on a salad. So it's got a little bit of that like soft floral flavor after the salted meat, which that's nothing compared to like a steak or something. But that blue cheese in this was like a perfect combo. So I'm satisfied with that. Even without the DOC label, I will keep drinking this. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cab.